Howdy, this is Eddie with Corn Fed Bushcraft. Today I want to take just a brief second and talk to you about uh, purifying water, collecting water in a survival situation, a bushcraft situation. Um, it's a uh, pretty well known fact that uh, there aren't too many uh, places, undiscovered places left in uh, the United States, especially areas like East Texas. Uh, that haven't had people at least, you know, walk across them at one point in time, uh, camp on them, places like that. And uh, it's a general rule, even though we try to clean up after ourselves, people are messy. They always leave something behind. Uh, today I want to talk about a uh, two liter soda bottle. You can almost find these, you know, just about anywhere as you go along any roadside. You know, uh, it's not uncommon to uh, find these just uh, laying up in the woods. They've caught air and they've blown for a little ways and blown up in the woods. Um, there's always trash. Anytime there's people, there there will be trash. Um, you know, as sad as it is, there always is trash and always will be. Um, today I want to try and... Uh, do a little video about uh, boiling water, purifying water in a plastic container and uh, show you how it works, a uh, little bit of placement of the uh, container to keep the container from uh, catching on fire or melting too bad and uh, just give you a little bit of idea of another way you can uh, purify or collect water uh, when you're in the woods or in a survival situation and uh, you don't have a metal container for boiling water or you don't have time or uh, whatever to uh, carve out a bowl and do the uh, stone, stone boiling method which uh, we'll save that one for a later video give you a little bit of demonstration on how that works but uh, alright what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get go ahead and uh, gather up the little wood and everything and uh, get the little tripod set up and I'll explain to you a little bit about how that works alright be right back alright I'm back with you now what we've done here is we've just went out and we've gathered up three sticks. Don't have to be any particular uh, size or anything, just fairly straight. Um, laid them down as you can see, matched up the ends as close as possible. Uh, these sticks are, I don't know, six, seven feet long. They don't have to be perfect, you know, you see that one's a little longer. Now what we did is we come up close to the top, leaving maybe a foot there. And then we just kind of wove those three boards together. <clears throat> now the next step is going to be to stand this up. Um, what I did when I wove these together, I left the string fairly long so we can hang the plastic container off of it over the fire. Alright, I'm going to stand these up, get a little fire started, and I'll get back with you. Alright, we're all put together as you can see. That's how it looks up top when you get it all spread out. Looks uh, surprisingly... Uh, to some people uh, very similar to a teepee um, these things real sturdy they hold a lot of weight alright I come down with a string as you can see that is very nasty dirty pond water um, <clears throat> this method does not remove the trash or anything from the water that will have to be filtered out with some kind of homemade filtration system but um, it's suspended over the fire um, I'd say that's probably uh, 10 or 12 inches above the fire. Um, as you can see, let me get a little closer here. Um, let's see if you can see. I know you can see the little particles of trash in there. I'll have to excuse that. That was my cell phone going off. Um, the water slowly moving from the heat. Um, as time progresses on, this container is going to warp. Those bottom little cones are going to kind of sink in, but the container will not leak. It may uh, lose its shape and be all malformed, but uh, it'll still hold water and it won't leak out the water. It can still be used to transport water and uh, things of that nature. And uh, you'd probably be able to use this container two, three, four, five times before it gets so small and shriveled up that um, it just won't hold any water anymore. But um, <clears throat> we're going to let this sit on here a little while and uh, just see how hot we can get this water. Maybe, you know, it's not much room in the top there, but uh, maybe we can get a little bit of a boil out of it. 
if not over time high enough heat for long enough periods of time uh, will sanitize this water enough to drink uh, most people including myself prefer the water to become a, a rolling boil you know that just right there and once it becomes a rolling boil you know for sure that it's safe to drink but um, not too sure about how long it would take at a, at a high temperature if the water wasn't boiling but uh, I am uh, sure that you know long enough with a high enough heat even if it didn't boil it would kill bacteria um, especially around here in East Texas you know if the, you got to watch where you collect water anyhow you've got cattle and um, deer and hogs and stuff like that and hogs are a sloppy animal uh, they'll uh, defecate in their water uh, while they're drinking it they you know there's no care in the world about it and um, you know, as far as cattle goes sometimes a uh, mother cow uh, when she's having a hard birthing process we'll try and get to the water to get something to drink while she's giving birth sometimes they slip and fall uh, sometimes they just don't make it and they die on the bank in the edge of the water so you really got to watch for uh, your water source and uh, be aware of what kind of contaminants could be in it all right we're gonna let this sit a minute get back with you in, in a little bit and uh, see how long it takes to get this water really piping hot you can see the bottoms look like they're starting to kind of turn in a little bit but all right I'll get back with you all right I know it's hard to see here but if you look real close you can see those flames coming up the side of the bottle there that's about what you want you get it you know you could probably get it two three inches closer but um, I wouldn't go too much further than that you get it too high and that bottles just gonna shrink incredibly fast now this is a uh, slow process but it is a very effective process uh, as you can see I told you earlier all the trash would look like it was starting to uh, move in the bottle from the heat you look on the very top there you got a thick rim of trash this makes for a pretty easy filtration I mean you can uh, filter that out they're fairly simple um, one thing to remember is if you're in a hurry and you need water a little bit faster don't put as much uh, water in the container um, purify enough for you to drink in one sitting and while you're drinking that water uh, be purifying your next batch for when you're done with that water that way you're not purifying uh, several hours worth of water like I've got going here uh, all at one time and uh, you'll get a little bit more water in you you'll feel a little bit better a little more energy while you're preparing your next batch of water all right as you can see we got bubbles coming up the side there small ones probably uh, another 20 minutes and we'd have some good rolling bubbles um, as you can see the uh, bottom is pretty much turned into a bowl got one little divot there in the middle but um, this process works you can do large amounts of water uh, whatever size of uh, container you have at the time uh, or whatever you can find really but uh, this is pretty good means of uh, sanitizing water in the wild or a wilderness situation um, where uh, sanitization is a, a key factor very important so um, this has been another episode of uh, corn fed bushcraft uh, we're gonna let the fire die down and uh, I'll see you next time <laughs>